The Minnesota Defined Vikings cornerback room is young, but extremely talented. You got Jeff L. Hefe Gladney. You got Cameron Tiny Dancer. You got Harrison, not Smith, and. Uh, but we've said that the Vikings would benefit from adding some veteran presence and leadership in that room because the current oldest quarterback on the team is Chris Boyd. The 2019 seventh round pick out of Texas. He turns 25 in September. The second oldest is actually Jeff Gladney. It's kind of uh, it's kind of funny uh, since he's a retired senior coming out of TCU. The veteran is Mike Hughes heading into year four. So yeah, that, they could use some bodies there. Enter one Malcolm Super Bowl 49 hero Butler, just released by the Tennessee Titans. Mm, so let's talk about him today. Uh, Butler. Just turned 31 on March 2nd, 5'11", a buck 90. Played his college ball at West Alabama. Uh, was a two-time first-team All-Gulf Coast Conference selection. He was not a workout warrior by any means at the Alabama Pro Day, but, aha, Belichick, always in attendance at the Bama Pro Days with Nick Saban, uh, saw Butler firsthand, decided to give him an invite to Patriots rookie camp as a UDFA tryout. He was signed, actually made the 53, playing 219 snaps as a rookie uh, with an interception and a pass broken up behind Daryl Rivas and Brandon Browner, etc. Then... Of course, Super Bowl 49 read the rub against the Seattle Seahawks, made that game-saving interception, cementing Belichick and Tom Brady's legacy off of Russell Wilson. Woo. They should have run from the one with beast mode, but, you know, turned him into an instant star. I was a starter for the next three seasons with the Patriots. Like, imagine being so good in the Super Bowl that the Patriots just punt on Revis. It's like, hey, you're going to replace potentially the best cornerback of all time. No big deal. Uh, but was famously benched ahead of Super Bowl 52 against the Eagles in U.S. Bank Stadium. Details on that are still murky. It is he said, he said. But uh, would have loved to see him shut down Alshon that game. Or did Belichick really think that Eric Rowe was going to be that guy? No. No. 2018 offseason. Signed a five-year, $61 million deal with the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Titans GM John Robinson and head coach Mike Vrabel, both uh, from the Patriots and Belichick tree. Plus, it reunited him with Logan Ryan, who also had left New England. Butler was a solid starting cornerback for the Titans uh, for the next three years. 2020, posted a PFF grade to 74.2. Also had four interceptions, 14 passes broken up, and only a 78.6 quarterback rating when thrown at uh, with only two penalties as well. But the Titans clearing up some cap space. Malcolm Butler a little bit long in the tooth. Uh, Titans do save $10 million in cap by moving on. But it's ex extremely clear that Malcolm Butler still has some very good football left him, as evidenced by how he played last year. Plus, that chip on his shoulder. It, him coming in from a community college, then West Alabama, then undrafted, then unheralded, then cast aside by the Patriots ahead of the biggest game of his life. Uh, well, the second biggest game of his life. And then... Uh, you also have him being cut by the Titans now. So he's, the man's coming in ready to rock and roll. He's going to have some fire in his belly, that chip firmly on shoulder. And I love that. I, I love that about cornerbacks. Plus, he's an outside cornerback playing 90% of his snaps on the outside, primarily right cornerback. So just because he's short, don't, don't be like, ah, yeah, he's a slot guy. No. Uh, and even though he's not long and lengthy the way that Zimmer generally likes his cornerbacks, he would be an asset to pair up on the outside starting opposite of Cameron Tiny Dantzler uh, in year two, as well as allowing Jeff El Jefe Gladney to be that sub-package nickel slot-only guy where he made some really nice steps his rookie year. Uh, plus, will be a great leader in that very young cornerback room. And I, I think that the Vikings cornerback could just take a little bit of that edge, take a little bit of that feistiness and be like, hmm, I'm going to prove the haters wrong too. I like it. Uh, and since he's cut, he won't count into the compensatory pick formula for 2022. And I know, dur, 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 dur. There's other free agent needs like guard, 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 safety, defensive tackle. Yes, but you can do both. Like, you are allowed to walk and chew gum at the same time. Plus, the Vikings aren't uh, clearly aren't done clearing cap space. And Butler probably isn't going to spank free agency like a Patrick Peterson or Richard Sherman. Uh, doesn't quite have that name value recognition, even though, uh, frankly, I, I think he probably has some better football in him than Patrick Peterson at this point. And by bringing him on, you know, perhaps to keep Zimmer from coveting cornerbacks high in the draft. J.C. Horn at 14, anyone? Hmm. Uh, although it probably won't, but it, it would allow you to spend draft picks elsewhere at other positions in need, like guard, 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 defensive tackle. Mm. So I would love to bring Malcolm Butler aboard for a reasonable rate if the market bears that out, because I, I think that would be an asset as opposed to what we're going to do. Start my cues again. See if he can uh, reclaim that in year four. See if Chris Boyd is up to the task. Ah, nah. Malcolm Butler, dancer, Alahefe. 
than Harrison Hand as your cornerback four. Let's go do the get it done. Uh, beer thoughts. Malcolm Butler, Vikings, question mark? Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. We'll support that work. We'll sum the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.